If I just got Logic Pro X and I want to open up a song that I've been working on in GarageBand in Logic, the first thing I would do is switch my drummer track to a producer kit. You do this just by going down over here in the drum kit section to producer kits. And you got a bunch to choose from, very, very similar ones to the ones that you already had in GarageBand. But the key difference that you'll see with this is that now instead of being one track, I can actually click this little button here and break it out into a bunch of tracks. And this means that I could mix just my kick, right? Just my snare, just my hi-hat. You have total control over all the little elements of your track. So if I just wanted to bring up the volume of one of those, I have control over that. I also though, beyond that, have control over the exact sound of this drum kit. So you get to this plugin by clicking on the top track here. So if I click on the overheads and then click on the drum kit here, I get access to this plugin. And with this plugin, I can go through and change out any element of this that I want to. So if I want to change out my toms from toms that sound like this, I can change them to these pawn shop toms, right? Or maybe these 70s plexi style toms or if i want to change my kick drum i can go through all these different kick options and find the one that really is resonating with me for the song that i'm working on so it gives you way more control to really balance out the kit and make it perfect for the song that you're working on you might love the sound of the drum kit but it's not like the way that kick drum sounds getting your sample choice right is a huge part of getting a great drum sound and a great mix in general and if you want me to go deeper on actually mixing logic drummer let me know in the comments below I've, i can do a whole in-depth series on making them sound more real let me know if you'd be interested in that in the comments below but let's go and get into the second thing that i would do which is use flex pitch on the lead vocal track we get to flex pitch by selecting your vocal track hitting e on your keyboard to bring up the editor window and then clicking right here and selecting flex pitch now flex pitch is going to analyze your audio and it's going to give you basically a keyboard where you can see every note that you sang and it allows you to do very very minute tuning on your vocal that's going to sound very very natural so this is great if you just want to tighten it up a little bit but you still want your vocals to sound natural there's ways to do this with third-party plugins and GarageBand, but this is just built right into logic it takes a second to analyze but once it's all set up it will look like this and you can see what we have here is the individual notes that were sung I'll go back to and so you can get really specific in here, like the way he hits that forget, it's just a little bit flat. So I can bring this, if I just double click on it, it's just gonna tune it up a little bit. Go back to school and just Subtle and natural sounding, but that note is just a little bit more on than the original performance. It allows you to save some really great performances. The third thing I would do in Logic Pro is create track stacks. Now, track stacks are a way for us to organize our session and kind of speed up the mixing process. This is really cool. So let me show you really quick. So here in the song, I have a bunch of guitars, for example. I can select the top track and then select the bottom guitar track while holding Shift, and we'll select all of them together. And then I can hold Command, Shift, and D, and I'll get this option, do I want to create a folder stack or a summing stack? I always do a summing stack. It's a folder, but it just allows me to do additional processing. A folder stack only allows me to do a volume adjustment of all the tracks. Summing stack allows me to do any sort of EQ or compression or effects that I want on all of those tracks in one place. So I'll hit create here. And then this has now generated this top track here, which we'll title in this case, guitars. And now I could fold this down if I want. It cleans up my session, makes it way easier to look at. So I could do this for all of them. I could do it for the vocal tracks here. We'll title this one Vox for vocals. I could do it with my backing vocals here, and I have a lot of them in this song, so this will really help make that look cleaner. Command Shift and D. We'll title that BGV for backing vocals. And we'll close that down. And then look how much easier it is to look at and move around in my session. So that's the first thing they do, but they also give you this fader here. So if I wanted to bring up or down the volume of, let's say the guitars in this verse, I could do that with just this one fader. It will affect all the guitar tracks at once. Right? Bring them down. So you can fine tune all of those tracks. If you have a relative balance of all the guitars that you like, you could just adjust them at the track stack level to just tweak it, make sure that it's the exact right volume in your mix. But we can go even one step further. If I hit I to bring up this little window on the side here, I could also EQ all the guitars in one place here. So if I wanna just add more brightness to the guitars, I could do that just with an EQ that's affecting all the guitars at once. The fourth thing I would do is apply fades and crossfades. This is something you can't do in GarageBand and it can help get you out of a bind at times and just be a convenient feature at other times, like this first example, which is if you just have guitars that are fading out at the end of a song, something like this. They fade and they fade and they fade and they fade. 
Well, you can definitely just automate the volume down, but with Logic, you also have a fade tool. So I could select all these tracks and then just pull over from the top right corner. And now they'll fade down at whatever length this track ends up being. So I can shorten it where they'll fade much faster. Let's go and adjust this just a little bit here. And it could be something like this. Right, so you can control and have them each fade at the exact length that you want them to fade. Really, really handy. But crossfades are something that can really get you out of a bind. This is a tool where functionally, if you just have a recorded audio, two different sections and they're butted up against each other and they're popping or clicking, this can fix that. So for example, in this verse here, there's a line I know pops just a little bit the way we edited it in GarageBand. If we listen here super close to this line. To have ambition and religion. So it's right there as he goes between these two phrases. And you hear that? It's very subtle, but it's definitely there. And religion. We can go in and we can use a crossfade just by grabbing at the top here and pulling across. And now listen to this. And religion. No pop, right? So fades and crossfades, you can also fade into a section. So if you just have a little area like this and you just want to fade in, maybe on a breath or just to make sure there's no pop at the start of that region, you can do that too. Before the fifth and final thing, I have something I want to give you. Logic isn't just going to make your music automatically sound better. If you want your music to sound better, then you need to get good at the principles of mixing. Getting a great recording is an obvious, but mixing is really extremely important. You can have a great song that was well recorded and it can still sound like terrible when you take it out of your car or listen to it anywhere other than on your headphones in your studio. So getting good at mixing is crucial and I want to give you something to help with that. I put together a six step checklist that walks through the same six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do it in Logic or GarageBand. If you haven't switched to Logic and don't know if you want to, this guide can still help you. So whether or not you're working in GarageBand or Logic, download my completely free six step checklist to a pro mix from the link in the description below. But let's go and look at the fifth and final thing, which is to set up your favorite effects. So for example, I always Always do a stereo slapback delay on my lead vocals. This is just a great pro vocal trick. I'll link to a video above here where I've already talked about this trick that can just help your vocals sound more professional and sit in the mix a little bit better. And in Logic, we can set up a custom bus effect send. Sounds complicated, but it's very easy to do. That will allow us to always have that effect ready to go for any track we want to send to it. So if I want to send a guitar to it, I could. If I want to send five different vocals to it, I could. And it's really easy because you set up one track and can send any track to it. So so if we look back at Logic here, if you hit Command 2 to open up your mixer window, you'll see here that there's already buses on our track. And that's because GarageBand actually has buses built into it. Your master echo, your master reverb, your ambience, your reverb knobs, those are technically buses. And when we open up a GarageBand session in Logic, we're seeing kind of the behind the scenes of that here. So you see bus one, if I turn this knob next to bus one, it correlates to bus one over here, which has this tape delay on it, or bus two, which has the master reverb on it, right? So these are bus effects that we're already built into GarageBand that now we get more control over in Logic. In GarageBand, you can't change what effect is on bus one. But here I can go in and I can make this a stereo delay, for example. It was already a delay, but I want it to be a stereo delay. And then I can pull up, in my case, I have a preset I've already made called Stereo Slap. I can pull up my own preset and then I could send some of this channel over to that delay sound. So if this is all the way down, I'm just going to hear the vocal. And if I turn this to the right, I'm going to hear the vocal plus that effect. And you'll start to see it coming in over here on bus one. I'll go back to school and just right? Forget. If I turn this all the way down, only the vocal. If I bring this in. I can't forget. Right, you can just mix it up in however you'd like. So you can set up if you like a particular reverb sounder, or I'd encourage you to find reverb sounds that you like. You can set them up automatically on these buses. So tailor them to be what you want them to be, not just what's preset already in GarageBand slash Logic. Okay, before you go, be sure to grab the six step checklist to a pro mix from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. It's gonna help you get a more professional sound out of GarageBand or Logic, and it's completely free. So be sure to grab it. And I'd love to hear from you. Are there any specific things when it comes to switching from GarageBand to Logic that you're struggling with or just learning Logic in general? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.